Happy Wednesday. My name's Anthony. I'm one of the pastors at KBC, and welcome to this week's edition of Midweek Morning Encouragement. Uh, I want to share just a few thoughts with you from uh, 1 Peter 2, verse 5. Uh, Peter, he writes to believers in the dispersion. They're, they've been scattered all over the Mediterranean world. Uh, they don't fit in. They're uh, made a public spectacle, and it's, so it's in the context of them not being welcomed, not being accepted, not being embraced by their surrounding culture that he writes these words. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, interesting, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And so I just want to share a few thoughts with you um, and that I hope will encourage you. Uh, first, I want you to notice that he calls you a stone. You're a stone. I'm a stone. And the, the word that Peter uses there is intentional. It's not just some random collection of stones lying on the ground that you can pick up and, and do whatever with. Uh, this is a word used intentionally to refer to stones that have been dug out of a quarry and then shaped and cut specifically so they fit the builder's purposes, uh, which ultimately in this text is a building, which is Peter's analogy for this living, breathing organism of people called the church. Uh, Peter's saying that even without a physical building, uh, we're still like a building. We're stones that have been dug out of the quarry of sin and of death and of depravity, and we've been specially shaped and fashioned by the divine builder for his specific purposes in this thing called the church, a group of people that have been called out of the world and unto God himself. So you're a stone. You're a you're a glorious, special, precious, redeemed stone that fits perfectly in God's masterpiece, the local church. That's what you are. Uh, but there's one more thing this text says that you are. It says you are a priest. You're a priest. Uh, I don't think we realize how mind-blowing this statement was that Peter gives here. This is a radical, life-altering New Testament truth. Uh, we call it the, the doctrine of the priesthood of all believers. Um, and, and this means uh, two things for you. Uh, first, it means that um, you have unlimited access directly to God through Jesus Christ. Uh, in the Old Testament, you know, God's people had a priesthood that they had to go to in order to go to him. Um, but today, God's people are the priesthood, and we go directly to Jesus uh, on our own. You don't have to confess your sins to someone else. You can confess your sins directly to God uh, through, with our only mediator, Jesus, who is the only mediator between God and man. So now, now we can have fellowship intimately with God. Now you can serve in his presence each and every day. And uh, it's like Peter is saying that every believer uh, lives inside of the Holy of Holies every moment of every single day. That's, that's what we have in Christ. It's not restricted to just one day or to one place. It's restricted to a person, the person Jesus Christ. And now for the Christian, life is, uh, we're like priests and we can offer uh, worship and sacrifices and offerings all the time. No more pigeons, no more bulls, no more lambs, uh, none of that anymore. Now you offer your very life as a specific special sacrifice of worship to the Lord. Uh, it's, it's when you obey Christ when obedience doesn't make sense. That's worship. When you serve the least of these as an act of worship to your great God and Savior. When you say no to your flesh because you can't stand the thought of one more ounce of wrath being poured on our Savior who redeemed us with his own blood. Uh, that's all worship. And, and as priests, we're to offer those things all the time from a heart of praise. Um, but it also means that you stand in the gap between God and the people that don't know him yet. Uh, you see, a prophet in the Old Testament represented God to the people, but a priest represented the people to God. And I, I want to show you what I'm talking about with a story. Uh, there's a story by the Washington Post that they, they posted a few years ago. It's about a woman named 
uh, Emma Daniel Gray, and she died just a few years ago. Uh, each night for 24 years, Emma Gray cleaned the White House. Uh, she took great pride in, in doing her job well. Uh, her official title was the, the charwoman, uh, which that's a title that dates back to the 16th century. Uh, it's where we get our English word chores. She's literally a chore woman. She did the chores of the White House. And uh, Emma Gray, um, she traveled each day uh, by public transportation from her home um, in Northeast Washington uh, to the residence of the most powerful people in the world. I mean, you know, talk about a contrast. And she served behind the scenes in the White House uh, from 1943 all the way until 1979 in her retirement. In her first decade, she uh, cleaned the Government Accountability Office uh, but then in 1955, she was transferred because of her you know, excellent work ethic uh, to clean the White House. Um, she, she, ha- she and her husband had seven kids, uh, which, which is really cool. And uh, one of her daughters would, said that um, for her mother, clean the White House, it just wasn't work. It was a matter of her own character. And so Emma, she, she died at the age of, of 95 years old. And uh, what made her life so compelling, though, was that she was a Christian. She was a believer. Uh, She wasn't just a hard worker. She offered her work as a sacrifice to God. Um, And the Washington Post actually uh, included some of this in in their article. Uh, They wrote that Emma cleaned the Oval, um, Oval Office, and whenever she did, whenever she got to the president's chair, she would just pause, and she would put her hand on the chair, her clean materials in the other, and she would just pray in the quietness of that Oval Office, and she would pray for the President. She prayed that that God would give him wisdom and safety, and that his leadership would lead to blessing and flourishing. And Emma served six presidents during her role as charwoman. Uh, here's a believer who understood and saw her life as a, as a priest standing in the gap between God and man, bringing people, in a sense, to God's attention, offering worship by her intercession for other people. And so let me ask you something. Are you bringing people to God's attention in prayer and in intercession? You know, who knows what God did and orchestrated as a result of that woman's prayers? Things we'll only find out when we get to the kingdom of heaven. This is a woman who understood that her life was a sacred sacrifice, an act of worship to the Lord. And so as you walk the rest of this week, I want you to view your life as one of a priesthood offering sacred sacrifices to God and also one of, that brings other people to him in prayer. Remember that you're a special precious stone, one that's been rescued from the quarry of sin and death and darkness and fashioned and especially shaped and created to fit perfectly in his living church. Well, I hope you've been encouraged by God's word this morning. I certainly was. And I hope you have a great rest of the week. And we'll see you next week right here on Midweek Morning Encouragement.